Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It's great to be back. Uh, we've been away for a while. There hasn't been a whole ton of news. Uh, before we get into today's topic, I want to give a big shout out to Floyd Money Mayweather. Um, and it, this is going to kind of bleed into the topic. Uh, Floyd's obviously made a ton of money uh, in the sport. And now he's doing some good things with that money. He has agreed to uh, pay for the entire funeral of George Floyd uh, and his tragic death. Um, so that's that's good news. That's um, that's a, a a really solid thing to do. Um, you know, people often say athletes make too much money and, and this and that. Well, now he can do beautiful things like. What, he, what he's doing by paying for George Floyd's funeral. Uh, so so uh, kudos, shout out to Floyd Money Mayweather uh, for doing a beautiful thing there. Uh, but today's topic, um, this kind of bleeds into it. Uh, we're going to be talking about fighters purses. There was a, a, an article on ESPN.com um, by Steve Kim, which was pretty interesting. And there were a lot of fighters who agreed um, that when boxing returns, they're going to have to take less money. Big names. World champions, world champion level fighters, um, guys like Keith Thurman, David Benavides, uh, Jamel Herring, all basically said, uh, Jojo Diaz said, yeah, we'll probably have to take less money um, because we won't be fighting in front of fans. Um, so that you, you won't have that gate revenue, which is interesting. Um, boxing's purses have grown exponentially over the last mm, two to three years. Uh, in, in 2017, um, ESPN bought, uh, purchased, you know, I made a minor deal with Top Rank uh, to bring big time boxing back to ESPN. In turn, that pushed um, HBO out of the boxing business, right? A year later, HBO announced they were leaving boxing entirely, which is interesting. Uh, that looked like it was going to damage boxing. It said the exact opposite happened. It, it created a bubble. Um, if you all remember when PBC started paying, what, at that time, five years ago, exorbitant purses for everything. You know, Go back three years ago, whatever it was, four years ago, Danny Garcia versus Keith Thurman got $2 million disclosed up front. And everyone was like, wow, that's a lot of money. I mean, J- Jamal Charlie gets that to fight Dennis Hogan now. Those aren't big paydays anymore. You know, like that's how quickly purses have grown. And um, we're going to get into that. I'm, we're going gonna, I'm gonna to outline just how quickly they've grown. But that was creating a bubble. Okay, these purses and um, Robert Garcia talked about this. Uh, maybe this will bring purses back to normal. And I, I'm not taking anything away from these fighters. They deserve every single penny they get. But there's not that much money or interest in boxing. When DAZN entered the boxing realm, they made a deal with Matchroom. And they basically said, for now, we're going to, and they're funded by Len Blasnick, who's, I don't know, the second richest person in England or some, something like that. You know, think about if Michael Bloomberg, if you're in America, if Michael Bloomberg or, or, or um, Zuckerberg said, I'm going to get into boxing now, how much money they would have, right? And he has that money. And said, we're going to overpay for things. We're going to overpay for fights, and we're going to overpay fighters, and that's how we're going to get them. You know, they paid Canelo, they paid Triple G, but they made that with Tevin Farmer. You know, they, they offered Tank Davis $5 million to fight Tevin Farmer. You know, um, and, and most recently, there was <laughs> this catastrophe. There was $10 million paid for the Mikey Garcia versus Jesse Vargas main event. Just the main event, just in person, $7 million to Mikey, $3 million to Jesse. $10 million in purses for a fight that, you know, there was really no demand for. That didn't generate a huge purse in Dallas. $10 million. That's a bubble. That's not real. The similarities between 
the boxing bubble that's create, been created by ESPN and DAZN is so strikingly similar to the housing bubble of 2008 that led to the Great Recession, the housing crash. Um, people were just getting in way over their heads in, in houses they couldn't afford. Now you see the same thing. That fight doesn't generate that kind of revenue. Mikey Garcia versus Jesse Vargas is not a huge mega fight. It's a good fight. It's a good scrap, and it, and it proved to be that, right? But it's not a $10 million purse fight. When you think about just a couple of years ago, Danny Garcia versus Keith Thurman in a unification fight did $4 million in upfront purses. This did 10, you know, 250% more. I, I mean, guys, this is not normal. So those purses had to come down. So now we get hit with this pandemic. There's no boxing for months. If you want to box again, if you want to make another check this year, you're probably going to have to do it in front of no fans. We could get into Dallas and Vegas in, in a minute, but right now, let's assume you're going to have to do it with no fans. So there's no gate revenue. So that's going to have a couple impacts. On your smaller club fights, they rely on gate revenue. You're not going to get that anymore, right? That, they, that is the, what they – there is no TV. What they get at the gate is basically – what they have, right, to divvy up amongst fighters and promoters and, and everything else. And all the bills they have to pay, the judges, the doctors, the venue sites, all of that. Um, so you're not going to have that gate revenue. So you're not going to have club fights, I don't think. And second, you're, you know, these fights are just going to have a lot less, a lot less money, unless you can put them overseas. You can still have mega fights, but you're going to have to put them in overseas where they'll pay to, at the, they'll pay at a, a massive site fee, like something like they did in the Middle East for the Joshua uh, Ru, uh, Ruiz fight. You're going to have to do something like that. You, if you want these mega fights, they're going to be done overseas. Or you're going to get smaller fights in the U.S. You're going to get Jamel Herring first, nobody. You're going to, you know what I'm saying? You're going to get those little fights, those smaller fights. Those tune-up fights in front of no fans. Because look, you could do two things. You can pay the A side, the Jamel Herrings, um, the, the the Jojo Diaz. You could pay them less, a little less for taking an easier fight. And then you could pay the B side peanuts, right? Because if you don't take it, we'll just go on down the line. We'll just find someone else. We'll just find another tune-up. If they don't take it, we'll just keep on going down the line. So you, I mean, you can pay them close to nothing, and that's what's gonna happen. Now that's not better to the B side. Um, but that's going to, just as quickly as fighters got used to making these ex absor exorbitant purses, that were two, three, in the case of Triple G and Canelo, sevenfold what they were making before the new paradigm in disclosed purses, right? They could get used to taking smaller purses. And I, I don't want to overstate this, right? And I don't want to understate it. I, I want to go through this, okay? Just a couple of the biggest names in the sports, the biggest draws. Um, Gennady Golovkin's average purse from 2008, uh, from 2017 to present is up 718%. Canelo Alvarez's purse is up 677%. Deontay Wilder is up 567%. Terrence Crawford average purse is up 222%. That's in a couple of years. Look, that's a bubble. I mean, there's no reason for any of that, right? This is not the Michael Jordan era of basketball where the sport is growing na nationally and internationally. This is not the home run chase of 98 where Sosa McGuire rejuvenated an entire generation of baseball fans and brought an entire generation of baseball fans back to the sport. Back uh, to baseball, that is. You know, Sosa McGuire's home run chase and, and, and Jordan's era, you know, after Bird and, and Magic grew the NBA, Jordan took it to another Stratosphere. Sosa and McGuire in 98 in baseball rejuvenated that. That's not the case in boxing. Boxing's fan base is largely the same size, right? You have a, it's a small niche market, but a very, very loyal market who will pay their last dollar to watch good fights or watch fights, period. Watch bad fights. We'll, we'll still pay it. Um, so uh, there's not there's not any more money. There's not more money in boxing. There's not more viewers. There's not more people to advertise to or sell it to than there was two or three years ago. It's largely the same people. So, I mean, what happens to bubbles when they get too big, they burst. And that bubble was way too big. It was just waiting to burst any second. Then the, the, the pandemic hit. And it's actually interesting because the pandemic could actually help boxing, right? It could, it, it's going to bring the purses down. It's going to do one of two things. It's either going to make purses smaller, 
right? Just as quickly as all those names got used to Jamal Charles never made a million dollars before before this. Now he's made two million to fight Dennis Hogan. Um, if he wants to continue to make two million, he's gonna have to fight bigger names, right? So so think of it this way, right? Like th those purses, like let's say Charles' average purse was seven hundred thousand. That went up three hundred percent. Now he's making two million to fight. No no disrespect to Dennis Hogan, but not to fight top fighters. To fight blown up one hundred fifty four pounders. Who weren't that good? Not a great fight. So it's either gonna if he wants to continue to fight the Dennis Hogan's of the world, it's gonna bring his purses down. And look, I'm not knocking on uh, Jamal Charles, who's on the wall, right? He's one of my favorite fighters. Okay, but I mean, him getting two million to fight blown up 154 pounders who were never good is, is top dollar, and that's a bubble. That's not real. There was probably 10,000, 8,000 people in the Barclays Center that night. I was there. I covered it as press. Um, and then the Showtime rate, like 350,000. Like, that's not 200 million. That's not $2 million worth of purse. Like, this is, there's not value there. Right? So that person needs to come down. So this pandemic is either going to get fighters accustomed to making less money, or if they want to continue to make $2 million a fight, Instead of fighting Dennis Hogan, he's going to have to work across the aisle, and he's going to have to fight Andre. He's going to have to fight Billy Joe or Jacobs or something. He's going to have to fight those names you want to see him fight if he wants to continue making $2 million. Because the days of him making $2 million to fight cab drivers is sadly over. I don't begrudge a single one of these guys. Like if I had a chance to, to make $2 million or whatever to fight somebody I could beat in my back pocket, I would take it too. I'm not going to complain about it. You know? Like, it is what it is. Like, if you can get it, that's easy work. If you can get it, take it. It's like being a college professor. It's a lot of money for easy work. Take it. But it's a bubble. That money's not there. And I think the fighters recognize it. You know, Robert Garcia's talked about it. And, and all of them, Jamel Herring, Jojo Diaz, Keith Irwin, they all said, yeah, we're probably going to have to take less money. It's going to organically either bring purses down or if you want to keep making those purses, you're going to have to make the best fights. So in a way, in a strange way, this is actually, this this little pause we'll call it in boxing action may have saved it from long-term distress, right? Uh, because the purses were getting out of control. And they, look, the fighters deserve the money. They do. If any professional athlete, if any celebrity entertainer, if any of them deserve to make the money, it's these guys. They put their life on the line for our entertainment. They're the most skilled athletes in the world. And they deserve the money. But if the money is not there, it's not there. And there's not that kind of interest in boxing. To, to, to outside of Canelo and maybe Joshua, there's just not that kind of interest in boxing where it's mainstream and, and it makes sense for them to make this much money, to, for the promoters to pay them this much money. It's not there. Um. But we'll see. I, again, I, I think this is either going to save boxing from the inevitable bubble that was about to burst any minute. And you, you can go to mixcombatradio.com and go to their articles. And, and Matt Hunter wrote a story on this by partner who I do the podcast with uh, twice a week on MCR Podcasts. Um, He did an article. It's, it's really good. And he got the financials, the dollar amounts, the dot. You know, he, he crosses the eyes and dot, crosses the T's and dots the eyes, um, and goes into great detail on, on how the boxing bubble was about to burst, and it was. So th th this may help it, or the fighters are going to get accustomed. They're going to want those huge purses again, and they, it's going to force their hand and promoters' hands to walk across the aisle and make the fight that can get them paid that kind of money. Yo, because. Charlo versus Hogan, I keep using that as an example, but Tank Davis versus Nunez, any of those fights, those are million-dollar purse fights. It's just not that interesting, right? If they want to make that, they're going to have to make bigger fights. You know, Davis versus Santa Cruz, that's a million-dollar fight. Davis versus Tank Davis versus Nunez isn't. So if you want to keep making million-dollar purses, you're going to have to fight the Leo Santa Cruz's of the world. Uh, but let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Um, let me know what you think of my take. Do you, do you think that in a strange way that this is help boxing? Uh, do, you, do you think it's going to organically bring down the purse? Is that good for boxing? Uh, let me know what you think. Or, or is the bubble going to continue to continue to grow? 
Uh, follow me on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, uh, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.